Welcome back to Rockin' Alpaca Wigs. I have uh, completely filled in the empty areas at the front of the wig. So as far as I know, it's it's um, complete up until this point. And here it is uh, so far. I'm gonna put this color behind him so maybe you can just see it. It actually needs to be brushed and it needs to be parted properly. This is just kind of how it looked after I took it out of the ponytail and then shook it out. The next thing that we're gonna do now is we're gonna we're gonna draw a line um, just a little bit in front of this hairline. You can still see my uh, my sewing line right there because I actually wasn't thinking. <laughs> I really should have used white thread because I forgot that I had this dark stuff which matches the thread, but I forgot that at the front of his wig we were going to be using white hair. So it really shows and I'm hoping that it will kind of just cover up and just not show like that. I think it will. It'll be fine. We're going to make a mark right in front of this hairline and then we're going to cut it and that's going to be really nerve-wracking because um, he has all of this stuff cupping his head right now and once I cut that off I don't know if it's going to sit on his head properly so we might have to pull some tricks or add some new surface. So let's go ahead and do that. Maybe I don't actually have to make a mark. Maybe I could just kind of just kind of do that. I'm just going to kind of just trim it. I, I, I really don't want to add more hair than that. I think this looks good. I think this is a good hairline, do you think? Do you think he has too big of a forehead? Maybe he does. See, this is what um, makes it kind of difficult, is you really don't know. I guess I'll be a little bit generous with my cut. Let's cut it off and see what happens and see if it, uh, see if it works well for us. Alright, now it has been cut and it looks like this. Now let's see if this works still as a, as a wig. There's a couple of tricks you can pull. Oh look, yes, it cups his head. Alright, I mean it's a little loose, but what are you going to do? Now how does this look? I think that's okay. I guess it depends, you know, how big do you want your doll's forehead to be? <laughs> you can make the hair come as forward as much as you want when it comes to when it comes to this just just means sewing more hair on this I think um, I like it for now I guess I can always go back and add some more if I want I can you can extend the wig cap even after cutting it and um, I will show you that possibly like in another video but for now I'm just gonna complete this one and see how I like it and uh, the next step that we're going to do requires making a weft and uh, this is what I've done here's my weft it, uh, it's hair that's glued down to a thin strip of tulle and uh, you just you just lay the hair down on there and you just paint it on just like just like we've done before and uh, as you can see mine is really sparse so in case yours comes out sparse you can always refine it and just go back in lay more hair in between where it's thin and just you know glue more hair on until it's got the thickness that you want so I'm gonna go ahead and do that Okay, so here is my work surface. I've got um, these two colored hairs um, just to get some variety and if I want to then I can add in this Lincoln long wool for a little bit of wisp. So uh, this is going to be put in a lot less than this one, but this one is going to add a cool texture. So I'm just going to show you how I do this. As you can see here's my... that's my, what my weft looks like. It's on a little strip of tool. I'm I'm really all for doing it on tool now. This is the coolest. I just think it makes things easier. It holds it together. Makes a really good weft. So I'm gonna cut a. I'm gonna cut a big cut a big chunk off this time, and then you kind of spread it. Spread. Try to spread it wide. Before, when I was when I did this the first time, I was using white glue, but this time I'll be using liquid latex because I just came by this stuff and I love it. So I'm just gonna do that. It dries real fast, so that really works for me. It dries into a um, kind of a yellowy kind of flesh tone kind of color, and I really like the color. I think it's great for the dolls. It's got a little bit of a yellow tint, and um, it's paler than 
what we would expect from like Doll's own normal yellow. It works either way. So just uh, try to spread it wide and lay it in the places where it's thin. And this is how we can fill in the gaps. And so it, it creates like a, like a really great rubbery material that's that's usable. So yes, I'm very much... I've just become a liquid latex person thanks to Rafika Art who told me about it. So that's basically it. You just you go through, you fill in the blanks, you know, you lay it down first and you'll make like a base and then you fill in the blanks and make it as thick as you want. Then you can add all these different hairs, that's what I'm doing, um, to get some variety if, if that's what your wig requires. Or otherwise you might just be doing one flat, one flat kind of hair and color. And that's, uh, that's how I've done it. So I will get back to you with what to do with this. Okay, now it's just been like an hour or something and my um, latex glue is already dry. And as you can see, it looks really sloppy. So we're going to make it neater. We're just going to trim off the top of this so that it looks better. And it'll be smaller so it's easier to work with. There it is. Now, now we have this. And we're just going to glue it to the inside of this wig right at the front and um, if you're planning on uh, making a high ponytail or anything any sort of a high bun or high hair um, style uh, with your wig then I would also glue one of these to the bottom but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to do it to the top because this guy doesn't need any ponytails so basically what I like to do is I actually like to trap the hair in between this tool and this base, which is also made of tool. And we're going to go like this, like right inside like that, and then it's going to flip outward and lay on top like that. So that's going to hide the edge. I hope I made my weft thick enough, but if it's not thick enough, then I'll just touch it up by just adding hair. <laughs> just a little at a time until it looks perfect. You can just keep working until it looks perfect. There's never never an actual end to this. And so I'm going to use um, latex again because I found latex is really great. I love it. I love it as a glue. Alright, so um, it's going to go like this. I, I made mine nice and long. I think I'm going to have excess that I might trim off. It might be better also to do this in small pieces so that you can glue on like a little piece at a time. Let's put down some some latex first. And I'm going to be very, very careful not to get this in the hair. The hair is very messy, so this might be a challenge. And also having this latex in here like this, it might cause the wig cap to grip the, um, the doll's head uh, better once the latex dries. Now let's press it in. And then we can also glue on top of it. I just did the, the front and then I might add some more latex in a few minutes just to make it easier. Just do a, a little section at a time. I'm going to put some on top. I don't know if you can see properly. Kind of put it like in the lip where the two parts meet. Just to make sure that it uh, sticks properly that it adheres, you might want to just sort of hold it for a few minutes just like that. That's what's going on. You can you can try to curve it along with your hairline. And there we have it. If you're going to use latex also as well, then uh, make sure that you're not allergic to it first because if you get this on your skin then it might um, it might irritate your skin. I am not allergic to it at all so I can just get my hands right on it. Uh, but if you're allergic then take uh, extreme precaution. You might want to wear gloves or something. 
And there we have it. I think it's glued in. Now I'm just going to give it a few minutes to dry and, and I'll check it out and brush it. As you can see, um, I, mine was so, sort of off a little. This one went all the way right here to the in front of the ear. This one didn't make it all the way to to this little bump that's in front of the ear. But that doesn't matter to me. That may or may not matter to you. I really, I don't think it'll show and I'm not going to try to make it perfect. If I wanted to, I would make another little weft and fill in that gap. It's no biggie. Everything is very, very fixable. So you can just make up some more hair and... Or you can glue some hair directly down to that. I'm going to let this dry and then we'll check it out. It's practically done. After this, we're just going to be brushing it, ironing it maybe, and styling it, and I'll show you how to make a good part. you got to be very careful. The glue is dry and we have all this new hair hanging down like this. And now he looks like some kind of washed up old aristocrat. <laughs> so uh, what we do now is we use this curling iron to lay it along the side of the hair, flipped outward, and just uh, put some heat on it to, to make it lay down. We just want to make sure it comes out and stays out and joins the rest of the hair. As you can see, it's still it's kind of going outward now, so this is good. And now, for the moment of truth, here's the wig now. This is what it looks like. I know it doesn't look that great, does it? But let's see. Let's find out how it looks. It's time for a good comb. My comb is freshly oiled. I'm going to brush it out and I'm going to show you how to part it. I can see some of the wig cap right here. It still wants to lay down. I'm going to trim this. Without trying to trim any of the hair. That might be a little tricky. So in the end I might still wind up having to tweak it a little to try to get this right. See? See what it's doing? You can see the wig cap right there, and the trick is to fold it backward, actually. actually. Well, we'll see what happens when we part it. Maybe it'll be perfectly hidden when it gets parted, and then maybe it'll look good. The Lincoln long wool is very frizzy. It kind of makes it a little bit more difficult to brush. Lincoln long wool doesn't like to be brushed. It just wants to be frizzy. This is how we part the hair. I hold it up like this. I, I brush it backward. Uh, decide where you want it to be parted and then brush it backward in that kind of way. And then you just kind of use the comb to pick the hair apart and start brushing the sides to the sides like this. And when you do this, you might see some thinness right here. And if it's too thin and looks bad, then that's when you can start sewing hair back into that area where you think you need it and fill in all the blanks. Just because you're at this point doesn't mean that it's over. <laughs> there might be a bit more work to do. Let's put it on his head, shall we? And any time during the wig's life, you can um, part it somewhere else anytime you want. It'll just mean um, you just have to very carefully brush the hair backward again and then split the hair wherever you want the part to be. This is really pretty. I like this. This suits him a lot. I think it makes him look old the way, the way I'm going for. 
and it's got this frizzy stuff. This is frizzy. This is the Lincoln Long Wall right here. It's causing it to be poofy in some places and frizzy. It would be laying completely flat if, if it was nothing but alpaca. Another job will be trying to get this stuff out of his eyes. <laughs> On top of his head I can see I can see down to the wig cap or his head or something but it's there's some pink glowing through and it actually doesn't look bad it looks like his hair is thin on top it looks realistic because this pink that I'm seeing right here is matching his skin tone as you can see So I might just leave it like that just for the sake of making him look as uh, raggedy as, I, as, as I'm wanting him to look. I'm combing his hair forward now to try to cover up the edge of that wig cap and make it look natural. I'm trying to get these front hairs to bond with these other hairs so that it lays out of the way of his eyes. That is how we brush and part the hair. Just remember, brush back and then split. And now here is the wrap up segment of Rockin' Alpaca Wigs. I just want to show you how his wig turned out. And this is him. This is Paiyu. Um, uh, the outfit is not exactly how it's supposed to be. I'm still kind of brainstorming his outfit. Still trying to make it work, but I must say I am so happy with his hair. It really brings the character together, makes it a lot easier for me to get my bearings about what the rest of him should look like. Here, right here, you can see this frizziness. That's my Lincoln Long Wool, and it's doing its job well. I love how it falls. Notice how it is skinny in the back. It's fluffy in the front and bigger and fuller. It's skinnier in the back, and I was wanting that. I was going for that, actually. That's why I kept my Lincoln long wool to the front. I want to show you the top of its head, and you can see, look how this is thin right here. You can see down to the wig cap right there, and it's thin, and I like that. That is, that is fine for, my char for this character. But if this was a different character, and if I didn't want him to have such thin hair, then... I would go back in here and just add more hair. Just sew more in right there and fill in all the gaps that you see happening when you do your parting. Here's a good side view. It really turned out the way I wanted it to. It's kind of interesting. It turned out the way I wanted it to, but it kind of did its own thing. Maybe it, it surprised me a little, did some things that I wasn't expecting. Here is that uh, ombre appearance. You can see it's a little bit darker down here. And then it gets lighter up there. I wasn't planning that from the start. I only started planning that when I got my alpaca hair in and I noticed that it was different shades. And so I thought I would just go with that and make something happen. It's, uh, it's white on top, underneath. You can see it's almost brown. It's it's so dark. It's still blonde, but it's it's like a dirtier blonde. And it's right there at the bottom of the wig cap. And it's sticking out down here at the bottom because it is the long strands that I had. And then the shorter strands are paler. <laughs> and then I had some that, that came from a completely different alpaca, I think, that were just white. And those turned out really short, as you can see. So that's what we get with the shortness in the front. It gives you a really cool shape. Mine looks raggedy. Just the way I want him to look. Like, look at this. Look at this netty scarf that I'm using. It just goes with how I want him to look. It's just very straggly, ratty, thin on the top, thick in the front, thin at the back. And this is exactly what I was talking about when I was saying that when you make your own wig and basically your your own accessories in general it's it really is like you're making a person and not just a doll because i mean look what i've done here this is this is strange this is a very strange and unique 
thing because it was ha handmade. And I used some fibers that I just kind of collected from a few different animals. And it's very natural looking, so what we get is is something that looks a little bit more like like a little character <laughs> rather than just your your typical run-of-the-mill doll. In my last segment I was having a little bit of trouble with this wig cap. This is just to let you see. I don't know if you can see it very well. Let's turn them again. This is how the front of my wig cap turned out. You can still kind of see it, but um, it's a little bit invisible. It's kind of, it might be kind of weird looking. I think maybe it kind of looks like the roots a little bit. You can still see the thread a little bit from where it was sewn together. So I trimmed the the wig cap made from tulle. Um, I trimmed it as close as I could and then I could just kind of put lots of hairs around it. I just tried to, tried to disguise it by burying it in there amongst a lot of hair. And I don't really plan to do anything else. But if I were you, and if you knew, you know, for instance, if you just really knew that your doll's hair is going to be a different color once you get the, to the front, then try to plan for that when you make the wig cap and, and try to make your thread match the, uh, the hair that's going to be up here. Otherwise, you might wind up with this. You get this little dark thing right here. And I could probably fix that if I wanted to, but... It, it, it doesn't really bother me. It kind of just looks like a shadow. So I'm just going to leave it for now. Unless it starts bothering me later. And as usual, alpaca hair has a really cool, like, memory. If you lay it up like this, it'll pretty much stay. It likes to cling to itself. The hairs like to cling together, so... And it's, it's very suggestive, so... So you can do this, you can make, you know, photos happen or something, doing stuff like that, making it look really crazy, or you can make it lay down. It's really great for just styling, just for, just for laying and tumbling. So that concludes this wig, um, and that concludes my tutorial, except I will give you one more video after this one, and I'm going to show you a little bit how, about how to repair the the wig if it happens to get damaged or if it happens to if you happen to need to make adjustments later I figured that'll be better as a second video as this one's probably running a little bit long so so I hope that was helpful I hope you enjoyed it please ask me questions if I didn't already answer it in my tutorial and Paiyu says bye and I say bye <laughs> from the Doll Scholar, X Maiden Trollblood. And I want you to have a great day. Who stole my sandwich? <laughs>